you guys make it with another YouTube video. Just uh, really quick, in all these videos, I've been kind of explaining that the state of the channel is uh, in, it's in pretty dire straits right now. Uh, and this video is literally no exception. Um, we are still we still need 400 watch hours, so please, guys, uh, if you wouldn't mind, share this around with anyone and everyone that you know, so that we can reach the the whole goal of uh, 400 watch hours. Um, because right now we're at 3,600. Um, we need 4,000 to stay in the partner program, and I would really, really like to stay in the partner program so I can continue to bring more in real life gun content to you guys on the internet. So, without further ado, today we're going to be taking a look at the HKG36 Mark II. This is the second G36 that I've ever made, and this one is particularly modeled after Ashes from Rainbow Six Siege. So, this was overall. It's, it's a really fun gun to to build, admittedly, and I think um, I think I did such an excellent job on this one. It just kind of it blows my mind how how good I can actually be if I stick my mind to it. So uh, here we go. We have a four stud wide stock. This is the basic stock that I used on the other one as well, for the most part. Uh, just a couple different features changed. The basically the only thing that really changed is the locking mechanism. The folding mechanism. Uh, so the locking mechanism is a Caro designed locking mechanism. It's just this big old cube. You push on it here and this closes in um, on the other side, which of course would allow this model to fold out. I wonder if I have to delete this. Come on. Don't make me a liar. Fold, please. Oh, I just had it. I just had it. There you go. You can see where it, it starts to fold now. Come on. The point is that it can fold. You can see that it's literally, it's starting to fold like right now. Um, and this folds over and it lays flat against the side of the gun on this side. But you guys get the point. Stock folds. It's <laughs> pretty basic. It's rounded up here on top uh, to be more comfortable when you put your cheek against it to use the iron sights. Iron sights are actually really cool because I was able to get the uh, overall feeling of the iron sights themselves using some of the newer uh, pieces that were available in the LDD category or catalog. Fire selector, same thing. I was able to actually kind of come through and polish off the total fire selector itself uh, because I was able to use um, the actual um, kind of the rounded slope pieces. So uh, full auto, single, and then safe, obviously. It's pretty basic. It's ambidextrous, so it does it on both sides at the same time. Trigger is a pretty basic uh, brick built trigger that I've been using for a long time now. I have a newer design uh, that would work better, but this is what I was using at the time. Um, the grip is actually where things get a little bit more interesting because this is actually a one stud wide grip with uh, plate panels on it. Uh, and then on the back, I was able to use um, flat pieces to make it look two stud wide, but this is a really, really thin and skinny grip. Uh, you can see the receiver up here is actually four studs wide, and this fits between the four stud wide um, grip or receiver. So this is, uh, at its most, this grip is three studs wide, but it skins down to being two studs wide uh, on the back and then one stud wide on the front. And I think that's something really, really cool about this grip design um, overall. Trigger guard is one stud wide, 
it comes up into the uh, magazine well and where the magazine catch is activated on the magazine itself. Please be disconnected. You aren't. That sucks. Uh, the magazine is by far one of the my my favorite things about this entire model because of how much detail went into this. Uh, this is a three stud wide base with a two stud wide line and then a three stud wide front, a four stud wide bottom for the the rubber pad, and then it just comes out just a little bit more because there's these plate things on the side of the G36 that Ash uses. Uh, the magwell uh, accepts three stud wide magwell in slightly above average four stud wide space it's not a uh, five stud wide space but it's not four stud wide it's just a little bit more which i think is all right i'm so happy with the angles and everything that goes on here i really like that about this model a lot of this is just plain receiver until you get to this side where you have the brass deflector shell ejection port but all that's pretty basic as well uh, flat top rail two studs wide um this portion of the receiver is actually curved inwards using bracket pieces. This was a really fun design to get down. The charging handle does flip to whichever side you would like it to be on. So it flips to the side or that side. Uh, there is no auto retraction system in this. This just loosely sits. Uh, so it could go either way, kind of like the G36 uh, or the MG36 floppy handle from Modern Warfare 3, in case you guys remember that. Uh, the handguard is built relatively hollow using some newer Technic pieces so that I can be at this slight, slight angle, but still be nice and smoothed out so that it, it would be nice and comfortable to hold uh, and then it fits with the receiver so well. Uh, this portion down here is three studs wide for this rail, and this is three studs wide for this rail, two stud wide rail up on top. Uh, as you can see, the portion of this handguard is vented in front and then rounded on top just to kind of polish off the look. The barrel has the most basic of muzzle brakes on the front. As for the magazine, there is in fact a bullet sitting on top, like so. It makes for just more realism as you go to load the weapon itself. So. That's the HK G36 Mark II from Rainbow Six Siege. This is one of the primary weapons of Ash in the game itself. And I think this overall is one of my more favorite assault rifles that I've ever been able to design out of LEGO because this one just looks so sleek and wonderful. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to call, rate, and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. Please, please, please share this video with as many people as you can so that we can bump up our watch hours to 400 um, or bump up watch hours by 400 because we are just we're just so close and i really hate to be departnered I, I really would just i'm really asking you guys please let's go ahead and get this done uh so that we can we can be done i would i really really appreciate that thank you guys so much for watching remember to dance subscribe for more videos similar to this one